Did you know all 44 U.S. presidents have carried European royal bloodlines into office? 34 have been genetic descendants from just one person, Charlemagne, the brutal 8th century king of the Franks. 19 of them directly descended from King Edward III of England. In fact, the presidential candidate with the most royal genes has won every single American election. This information comes from Burke's Peerage, which is the Bible of aristocratic genealogy, based in London. Every presidential election in America, since and including George Washington in 1789 to Bill Clinton, has been won by the candidate with the most British and French royal genes. Of the 42 presidents to Clinton, 33 have been related to two people, Alfred the Great, King of England, and Charlemagne, the most famous monarch of France. So it goes on, 19 of them are related to England's Edward III, who has 2,000 blood connections to Prince Charles. The same goes with the banking families in America. George Bush and Barbara Bush are from the same bloodline, the Pierce bloodline, which changed its name from Percy when it crossed the Atlantic. Percy is one of the aristocratic families of Britain to this day. They were involved in the gunpowder plot to blow up Parliament at the time of Guy Fawkes. If America declared its independence from the European monarchies in 1776, how is it possible that every single president has descended from European monarchs? If presidents are democratically elected, as we are told, what are the odds that we would always choose members of British and French royal bloodlines to lead us? Michael Tessarian wrote, the Americas have always been owned and governed by the same royal families of Britain and Europe that conventional history states as being among those defeated during the wars of so-called independence. David Icke wrote, If it really is the land of the free, and if, as is claimed, anyone really can become the president, you would fairly expect that the 43 presidents from George Washington to George Bush would express that genetic diversity. You're having a laugh. The presidents of the United States are as much a royal dynasty as anything in Europe from whence their bloodlines came. Researchers like David Icke, Michael Tessarian, and Fritz Springmeier, along with foundations like the New England Historical Genealogy Society, Burke's Peerage, the Roman Piso homepage, and other reliable genealogical sources, have documented these royal presidential bloodlines. Actually, by branching out far enough on the presidential family tree, the dedicated researcher will find that all 44 presidents share kinship, belonging to the same general ancestry, often called the 13th Illuminati bloodline, the Merovingian line, and or the Windsor-Bush bloodline. David Icke wrote, If you go deeply enough into the genealogical research, you will find that all the presidents are from this line. A spokesman for Burke's peerage, the Bible of Royal and Aristocratic Genealogy based in London, has said that every presidential election since and including George Washington in 1789 has been won by the candidate with the most royal genes. Now we can see how and why. United States presidents are not chosen by ballot. They are chosen by blood. Granted, the relationships are sometimes distant 10th or 15th cousins, but in a country with hundreds of millions to choose from, this simply cannot be chance or coincidence. Gary Boyd Roberts, a genealogist at the New England Historic Genealogical Society, thoroughly traced these connections in his book Ancestors of American Presidents. George W. Bush himself is directly related to 16 former U.S. presidents, including George Washington, Millard Fillmore, Franklin Pierce, Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses Grant, Rutherford B. Hayes, James Garfield, Grover Cleveland, Teddy Roosevelt, William H. Taft, Calvin Coolidge, Herbert Hoover, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Richard Nixon, and Gerald Ford. Bush is closely related to the King of Albania and has kinship with every member of the British royal family and the House of Windsor. He's related to 20 British dukes, the 13th cousin of Britain's Queen Mother, 
and of her daughter, Queen Elizabeth. He's thirteenth cousin, once removed, from Prince Charles, and has direct descent from King Henry III, Charles II, and Edward I of England. Through the House of Windsor and King Henry III, the Bushes and Bill Clinton are genetically related as well. According to Burke's peerage, even according to the official genealogy, Bill Clinton is genetically related to the House of Windsor, the present royal family in Britain, to every Scottish monarch, to King Henry III of England, and to Robert I of France. In 2004, George W. Bush ran as a Republican against Democrat John Forbes Carey, his 16th cousin. These cousins, related to the same British and French monarchs, are also secret society brothers in the infamous Skull and Bones fraternity. John Carey descends from King Henry II of England, and Richard the Lionheart, leader of the Third Christian Crusade in 1189. He also has links to royalty in Albania, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Russia, Persia, and France, but still not enough royal genes to top George Bush. Earlier in 2000, we see the same story. George W. Bush ran neck and neck with Al Gore, another supposed Democrat and cousin of the Bush family. Michael Tessarian wrote, Al Gore is a descendant of Edward I, Roman emperors Louis I, II, and Charles II, and is a direct descendant of Charlemagne, which makes him a distant cousin of Richard Nixon and George W. Bush. So the top Democratic candidates against Bush in 2000 and 2004 were actually his cousins. The publishing director for Burke's Peerage wrote, Never in the history of the United States have two presidential candidates been as well endowed with royal alliances. There has always been a significant royal factor in those who aspired to the White House, with Presidents George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, and Ronald Reagan, among others, all boasting blue blood links. Al Gore, a descendant of Edward I, he is also a cousin of former U.S. President Richard Nixon, who resigned from the White House in 1974 for his part in the Watergate scandal. However, Al Gore does have direct links to the Holy Roman Empire. He is descendant of Roman emperors Louis II, Charles II, and Louis I, and is therefore also a direct descendant of Charlemagne, the 8th century emperor. The problem is that Gore's Charlemagne links also make him a cousin of George W. Bush. By placing members on both sides of America's faux political dichotomy, the old monarchs have guaranteed their right to throne under the guise of democratic elections. Back in 1996, we see the same tactic, as Democrat Bill Clinton defeated Republican Bob Dole, his cousin. David Icke wrote, even Bill Clinton and Bob Dole, who opposed each other at the 1996 election, are distant cousins. They can trace their ancestry to England's King Henry III, who reigned from 1227 to 1273, and U.S. Presidents William Henry and Benjamin Harrison. Clinton has far more royal blood than Dole, and is directly descended from the same bloodline as the House of Windsor. Every Scottish monarch and King Robert I of France. This is why he was the Brotherhood's choice. The Windsor-Bush bloodline reaches from the American presidents back to British and European royalty, and it doesn't stop there. It continues back through Roman emperors all the way to Babylonian kings and Egyptian pharaohs near the beginning of recorded history. From Marie Antoinette and King Louis XVI, the French line continues back through from Louis the Fifteenth to the First, Charles the Eleventh to the First, Henry the Fourth to the First, Philip the Fifth to the First, Robert the Second, and many other French monarchs. It passes the de Medici family, specifically Catherine de Medici of France, who supported Columbus's expedition to the New World, along with bloodline Queen Isabella of Castile, King Ferdinand of Spain and the House of Lorraine. It was also Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand who started the 350-year Spanish Inquisition, which ordered the murder of millions 
who refused to convert to Christianity. And from the House of Lorraine, Duke Godfrey de Bouillon became the first crusader king of Jerusalem. David Icke wrote, Father George and wife Barbara Bush are both descendants of Godfrey de Bouillon, who in 1099 led European noblemen in the successful crusade to recapture Jerusalem from the Islamic faith and moved into the king's palace at Temple Mount. Godfrey de Bouillon was the first king of Jerusalem and the Duke of Lower Lorraine, a major region for the Illuminati bloodline. So when George W. Bush, a descendant of the de Bouillon, through his mother and father, talked of a crusade against Islamic terrorism, this was no slip of the tongue, as was reported. The British line goes back from Prince William and Harry, through Prince Charles and Princess Diana, to Queen Elizabeth II, King George VI and V, King Edward VII, Queen Victoria, King Edward III, II and I, and King George III, II and I. Then it passes through King James I, who ordered and financed the now most widely read version of the Bible. Before James came Mary Stuart, King Henry the Third, Second, and First, King John, signer of the Magna Carta, and back to the Plantagenet and Habsburg dynasties under the Roman Empire. Other branches carried the bloodline to Scotland, Austria, Germany, Spain, Sweden, and even Mexico. This same bloodline also includes key Scottish families like the Lords of Galloway and the Commons. Mary Louise of Austria, who married Napoleon Bonaparte, Kaiser Wilhelm II, the King of Germany at the time of the First World War, and Maximilian, the Habsburg Emperor of Mexico, who died in 1867. On and on it goes into country after country. This bloodline connects into every surviving royal family in Europe, including King Juan Carlos of Spain and the Dutch, Swedish, and Danish royal lines. Before the Habsburgs, the House of Lorraine and Charlemagne were the Merovingians, who originally brought the bloodline to France and northwest Europe. Back in 4th century Rome, the bloodline passed through Emperor Constantine, the first professed Christian emperor who initiated the Roman Empire's transition into a Christian state and presided over the First Council of Nicaea. He was preceded by the Roman Piso family, who will be discussed later. Before them came Herod the Great of biblical fame and Ptolemy the Fourteenth, son of the most well-known Roman emperor, Julius Caesar. Caesar actually married into the bloodline through Cleopatra, the most well-known Egyptian queen. A little further down this very same bloodline brings us to Alexander the Great. David Icke wrote, One common link in this bloodline is Philip of Macedonia, 382, to 336 BC, who married Olympias, and their son was Alexander the Great, 356 to 323 BC, a tyrant who plundered that key region of Greece, Persia, Syria, Phoenicia, Egypt, Babylon, the former lands of Sumer, and across into India, before dying in Babylon at the age of 33. During his rule of Egypt, he founded the city of Alexandria, one of the greatest centers for esoteric knowledge in the ancient world. Alexander was taught by the Greek philosopher Aristotle, who in turn was taught by Plato, and he by Socrates. The bloodline and the hidden advanced knowledge have always gone together. Back the bloodline goes past Alexander, past Nebuchadnezzar the fourth, third, and other kings of Babylon, all the way to ancient African kings and pharaohs of Egypt. Ramses the second and first, Tuthmosis the fourth, third, second and first, Amenhotep the third, second and first, and many more. For millennia, these kings, queens, pharaohs, and emperors have obsessively interbred with themselves to preserve and spread their bloodline. They have ruled over us since the beginning of recorded history, claiming they were given divine right to the throne by God or gods. David Icke wrote, this divine right is simply the right to rule by DNA. We have a head of state in Britain to this day who is only there because of her DNA, and the whole freeloading hierarchy of the royal family is structured according to a person's DNA relationship to the king or queen. 
What is royal rule by DNA, if not outrageous racial and genetic elitism? This divine right to rule has nothing to do with the divine and everything to do with the real origin of these bloodlines. They claim to descend from the gods of the ancient world. The royal families have interbred incessantly with each other since ancient times because they are seeking to retain the DNA corruption that can apparently be quickly diluted by breeding outside of itself. How interesting that the families of the Illuminati and the power elite do the same to this day. Why? They are the same bloodlines. The royal divine bloodlines of ancient Sumer and Babylon, now Iraq, Egypt, the Indus Valley, and elsewhere, expanded into Europe to become the royal and aristocratic families that ruled that continent and most of the world through the British Empire and those of France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, and so on. As the peoples began to challenge and reject the open dictatorship of royal rule, the bloodlines began to move underground, by operating among the population in all the areas that control modern society. You will find a similar story all over the world. Credo Mutua, the official historian of the Zulu nation, told me how so many black African leaders that were placed in power after the colonial masters gave the continent independence came from the bloodlines of African kings and queens who claimed to descend from the same gods as their white counterparts.